So here we're going to look at uh, using the two methods of depreciation, uh, the reducing balance method and also the straight line method in terms of um, their entry into the double entry accounting system. So the first one we're going to look at is an asset, in this case a machine, that's been depreciated using the reducing balance method at a rate of 20% per year. So the original transaction is going to be a simple double entry when the machine is purchased for $2,000 you would, um, in this case actually it's pounds, you would credit the cash accounts because you paid cash for it and you would debit the fixed asset account, the machinery account, 2000 and that would give you obviously a balance carried down at the end of the financial year of 2006 uh, of 2000 and a balance brought down on the first day of the following year. The provision for depreciation here would be based on the actual residual value of the asset. Well, at the end of the first year, based on the historic cost, 20% of 2000 is obviously 400. So the entry that would go into the profit and loss account um, as an expense for depreciation, um, simply you've used the machine for a year, its parts are not as efficient, so it's going to lose value or depreciate, and that entry would be 400, 20% of 2000, the historic cost of the machine. So we would credit the provision for depreciation account and debit the profit and loss account and the balance at the end of the year will be £400 and the bought down into the first day of January next year is going to also be 400 we can see that the um, entry onto the debit side of the profit and loss account in now what is called an income statement would be the £400 uh, which is taken away with all the other expenses like wages and lighting and heating. And of course it's going to reduce your net profit by 400. Unlike these expenses, the reason we call it a provision for depreciation is that um, a bill doesn't have to be paid out of your bank account because the um, wages, staff are obviously going to receive that into their bank account so the money would leave your business bank. Lighting and heating has to be paid to the utility company but there is no provision for depreciation company. We are simply allowed to take this away because it um, is a legitimate cost in terms of the fixed assets reducing in value because you've used them over the year to create the products that you're selling. How would this be shown in the balance sheet? Well, uh, in B-Swift's balance sheet, it would um, be shown under three columns. The original cost of the asset, what we sometimes call the historic cost, in this case, £2,000. The total depreciation, which is the same as the annual, because it's right at the beginning of its life, which is 400 and that leaves you with a net book value. In other words, today's market value of this machine is 1600 now, if we look into the second year, obviously reducing the amount of depreciation um, using the reducing balance method means that uh, you will have a different amount of depreciation, a reduced amount each year. So the first thing, of course, is that the asset, uh, the machine, uh, was uh, originally paid for using cash. And so at the beginning of the year, you had a balance on your machinery account of 2000 that's kind of like the value of the machines in your business. And that hasn't changed at the end of the uh, year 2007. So you have a balance carried down and bought down of 2000 The balance bought down um, of depreciation is going to be 400 from last year. But this year we are going to work out uh, our depreciation based on the actual net book value. Well, we said that the net book value was... 2000 minus 400 from last year, which means that at the beginning of this year, the netbook value of the machine was 1600. When we work out 20% of the reduced uh, value of the fixed asset, the machine, we get a new annual depreciation, which will go into our profit and loss of 320. That now means that in total, 
we have £400 that we took away last year for depreciation, plus this year's depreciation, which gives us a balance overall that is carried down of 720 400 plus 320 and a balance brought down into the beginning of next year of 720. So that annual depreciation of 320 would feed into the debit side of your profit and loss account and would be taken away from your gross profit to reduce your net profit. And the total depreciation of 720 goes into your balance sheet. All right, so that you can work out the net book value of the machine as it stands at the end of 2007. We paid 2000 for it, it's now lost 720, so its net book value is 1280. And now over to the straight line method of depreciation. Here we're going to look at a different company uh, that has uh, obviously um, two lorries that they use to deliver their products. And it's worth noting that in this question, the first year we have one lorry of $8,000. In the second year, we add another lorry worth $11,000. But let's do the first year, which um, happens to begin on the 1st of July, 07, um, or X7. And so, of course, when we buy the motor vehicle, it's going to be credited from our cash account and debited into our motor vehicle asset account, which means at the end of the financial year, which would be the 30th of June, the following calendar year, X8, we have a balance carried down of 8,000 and bought down of 8,000. The annual depreciation, of course, would be calculated using the straight line method, which is much, much easier because it's always the same amount of depreciation each year. So in this case, the depreciation would be 1,500. Okay. And that would go onto the debit side of our profit and loss account and would be credited in the provision for depreciation account and it means that at the end of the financial year on the 30th of June x8 we have a balance carried down and bought down of 1500. Now I know some of you will be asking how did we get the 1500? Well if we look back at the original question it gives us the information that we need to work out the annual 1500 depreciation which being the straight line method will remain the same over the five years. The historic cost of the first lorry is $8,000. The residual value, in other words how much we estimate it's going to be worth after we've used it for five years which is the expected life is $500. So the straight line depreciation is simply 8000 how much it cost us, minus how much we think it will be worth at the end of its useful life, divided by the number of years we plan to keep it as a fixed asset. 8,000 minus 500 is 7,500, divided by 5 gives you an annual depreciation of 1,500. That annual depreciation will go into your profit and loss account on the debit side as an expense, and that will reduce your gross profit. And in the balance sheet, again, using the three columns, we would show the historic cost, the total depreciation so far of 1,500, and the net book value of 6,500. 8,000 minus 1,500 leaves me with a net book value of 6,500. If we look at the second year when we purchase the additional fixed asset, we now have two vehicles. Uh, one that originally cost 8000 and the second which cost uh, 11000 So the depreciation for each vehicle will be different because they are different vehicles. And so for the first vehicle, we continue to have 1500 For the second vehicle, the depreciation will be $2,000 based on the same system that I showed you previously in terms of working it out. All that information on the historic cost and the residual value is in the question. And that means that now, because you have two vehicles, your annual depreciation will be the total, which is 3500 which will go into your profit and loss account as an expense.